Porsche Cup events. I'm John Hindhoff. Alongside me to my right is Tim Harvey, the most successful driver ever in Porsche Carrera Cup GB history, reunited after far too many years apart. Good to be back working with you, Tim. This is a, a very different challenge for all of these drivers, and particularly for the ones for whom championship points are, are going to be uh, important. Right at the top of the Loire Valley, we're at Le Mans. Yeah, it's a fabulous opportunity for these guys to race at a circuit, particularly for the amateur guys who are absolutely looking forward to this massively. Yes, they're scoring points in their own um, national championship, but of course, the, the fact they're at Le Mans, the fact they're racing on the, uh, the full circuit on the morning of the 24-hour race, it, they want to do as well as they can in the overall classification as well. It's changed a little bit since you raced here in the 24 hours, but Le Mans, as all the drivers always say, including Tom Christensen, who's won here more times than anyone else in the 24 hours. Le Mans is Le Mans. There's something special about it. These guys, even some of the more experienced guys, are going to have to just calm themselves down a little bit when they go out and see that Dunlop Bridge for the first time. Yeah, there's very few drivers in the field that have actually raced on the full circuit. There's a few, but not many. Um, even in the French Carrera Cup Championship, there's not many drivers that have done it before. So, And it isn't a circuit, although you can learn where the circuit goes fairly easily, you can cannot prepare yourself for breaking at 180 miles an hour, um, you know, four or five times a lap until you get out on the circuit. And because of the length of the circuit, you don't get that many laps in practice. So they, I think most of the drivers will go quicker in the race than they did even in qualifying. Yeah, because they're learning the nuances of, of the track itself. I mentioned three rounds of European Championship. Uh, Porsche Carrera Cup Benelux. This is the third round for them. Xavier Masson leads their A-class and Pierre Perron, uh, their B category races. We'll go through all of this as we go through the races, uh, the race itself, but there are various classes within the championships. Uh, Porsche Carrera Cup France again with an A and B class. Uh, Julien Andelier uh, leading A, Nicolas Misla uh, on uh, the B. Now, this is only their second round for Carrera Cup in France. And Porsche Carrera Cup GB, uh, most of you will be cheering on the Brits as you are tuned in uh, watching from the UK, I'm sure. Dan Kamish leading that, and this is round seven uh, of the championship. And the big news for Porsche Carrera Cup GB team is that Dino Zamparelli, third in points at the moment, is on the front row after a stunning qualifying. Uh, and Charlie Eastwood, who's in second, is only a couple of rows further back. Yeah, all the big hitters from the uh, UK Championship Carrera Cup GB are up there. Zamparelli was absolutely flying, uh, quickest in one of the free practices, second in the other. He's been on it from the word go. Dan Kamish compromised himself a little bit by um, hitting one of the not-so-floppy markers that are around the course and damaging the front of the car at the start of free practice too, but he bounced back to set a very good time in qualifying. Of course, all the drivers was telling us about traffic on the lap, and I suppose 61 cars, it's it's probably true. Um, so they all think they could have gone faster, but yes, they're all the big hitters are up there. Yeah, this is going to be a scramble at the start. It's been a couple or three years since we had the Porsches here as part of the 24-hour uh, weekend. And I seem to remember that the last race was uh, very exciting. And Kevin Estre suffered a puncture on the last lap. Ben Barker for Palm Motorsport went through and took the overall victory. We've got a good chance of a Porsche Carrera Cup GB driver doing that today. Pole position it is uh, Florian Latour from the uh, French uh, Championship. But then, as Tim said, all the uh, big hitters from the GB Championship are there. There's points of being scored within your own championship group. So if you're in the Benelux championship and you're the first Benelux driver, but you're in 12th position, in terms of your championship, you'll get max points for that. I don't think we need to worry about that too much at the moment. We'll sort that out at the end. What we're looking for is a cracking race and 460 horsepower for everybody under their right foot. It's going to be entertaining round here. There have, there's had to be one or two changes, though, to the cars for this track. Yeah, the first thing is that it's a rolling start, obviously, because we're at Le Mans. Mm -hmm. uh, that does tend to spread the cars out a little bit, but drivers are dr race drivers are race drivers. They still want to lead, don't they, on the first lap? Oh, yeah. So expect some... Zamparelli said he's going to attack 
from the word go. He wants to try and be in the lead. He thinks if he gets out in the lead that he can stay there. But this is not a traditional circuit. It's not so easy. Um, but yes, a couple of other changes are there's a requirement from Michelin, the um, solar su tire supplier, that everybody starts on a brand new set of tires. Right. They've had three sets of tires, new ones for the weekend. So they had two effectively for qualifying. But every single car is on a brand new set of tires. And Michelin have also imposed a maximum camber allowance and a minimum starting tyre pressure allowance. Right. So everyone has to abide by that throughout all the um, championships. And I think that's a good thing. It uh, reduces the risk of punctures, evens out the uh, tyre wear. And we're, you know, 45 minutes is quite a long race for these guys. I think it'll be about 10, 11 laps, Great. depending on whether we have slow zones or anything else to take part. But around about 10, 11 laps. Uh, and a slight change to the engine here as well for the cars. Now, we've got five. We used to have one very long straight here at Le Mans <laughs> up until about 1990. Um, now we've got five very long straights, effectively, because the Lindois and Adier, what us Brits call the Mulzan Straight, has been split up with two chicanes, and the run down from Mul uh, from Mulzan Corner to Indianapolis is that pretty? That's pretty quick, and then the run up to the Porsche Curves, that's pretty quick as well. And the cars would have been on the rev limit of too long had they left them in their standard, normal racing track spec. Yeah, the gearing, the gearbox ratios are obviously designed for normal racing circuits. <laughs> so the sixth gear, they don't have a, anything like the straights on a normal racing circuit. So the sixth gear is effectively too short. The cars would have been bouncing off the rev limiter down those long straights. So they put a little air restrictor in just to knock the power back about 20 horsepower. Right, the uh, grid up in front of us now. That's all from the French Championship. Now, the... the uh, Flags of nations don't necessarily represent the championship there, because Charlie Eastwood, yes, that's his flag, but of course, the Red Line Racing car, he is from the British Championship. You might recognise some names as we go through here. There's Lewis Plato from the UK Championship. Good thing for Tim and I is the 900s, all the British Championship cars, the Porsche Carrera Cup GP cars, are in the 900s. Not all the 900s are just British Championship. There's one or two in the Lopers, but all of the guys from Porsche Carrera Cup GP are in the 900 numbers. Although, see, there we are. Christian Lapierre from uh, Sebastian Loeb Racing. He's nabbed 911. I wonder why he picked that. <laughs> Uh, very, some very good drivers here, and as you go through, you'll recognise some of the names. Uh, Vincent Beltoise, yes, that is that Beltoise family. He's part of the French Championship on the ninth row of the grid. And all of these guys are battling for championship points, remember, within their own group. So it's not necessarily about the overall finishing positions, although I have to say... I think, Tim, if there's a pass on, nobody's going to be going, oh, hang on, he's not in my championship. He's, the people are going to go through. They want to get as high up the grid as they can. They're at Le Mans, for goodness sake. Yeah, with 60 cars, they're going to get very strung out, aren't they? So uh, the, the difference between the leader starting the race across the start-finish line and the last car crossing the start-finish line is going to be probably 25 seconds. They're going to be separated by big distances, so you might as well race against the car that's in front of you, regardless of which championship it's in. This is fantastic. We're still going through the grid. Now, right at the back is the 5-5-5. This is Julien Andelier. He is the points leader in Porsche Camara Cup France. He didn't get a qualifying time, and in fact, sharing the back row, the uh, Tax BWRT car is exactly the same with Omid Uglu behind the wheel of that car. So the 555 car is one that I think we'll see uh, quite a lot of coming through. There's Uglu at the back, the Turkish driver, uh, and right at the very back, 61st position, the leader of the championship in fr uh, for the France uh, Cup, which is the 555 car, the Martinet by Almeris machine. And that is going to be a very, very long way to the front. And remember, he's got actually he's got quite a lot of cars to get by before he starts picking off the French class. Okay, the Turkish driver ahead of him, but then there's five or six Benelux and British cars before he starts picking off into his own championship. So lots of storylines here in behind the Porsche pace car as it is now. Let's hope we don't see any of the interventions by the safety car that. Uh, will slow down the race, and Porsche have an experienced centre here, in fact, right opposite 
our position at the end of the lap here. It's just off to our left, and they've had some uh, very rapid passenger rides from uh, the new GT3 4-litre this morning, going out there, some very lucky people. And uh, I spent some time at Porsche Experience Centre LA recently, having a look around there, and uh, amazing facilities. There's, there's one at Silverstone as well, of course, that was the original. I'm sure Porsche GP would say the best as well. But it's the model on which they've all been based, and one in Shanghai to be opened later on uh, this year as well. One interesting, uh, one interesting aspect of the of the UK cars is that uh, Nick Tandy, Porsche factory driver, has his own team, JTR, in, uh, named after his brother Joe Tandy. He has his own team in here, and so his leading driver is Dino Zamparelli yeah. in second place. Now, wouldn't Dino love to win it for Nick at Le Mans? That would be fantastic. But Nick has been very omnipresent in the Porsche Grand Cup paddock this yeah, weekend. Does really trying to help his drivers and team with his experience. There is the 555 car right at the back for Julian Andalou, uh warming his Michelin tyres. Does that really do any good, Tim? Yeah, it does. You're trying to build heat sort of all the way through the carcass of the tyre. It's gentle weaving, and they're building heat throughout the tyre. They'll have no problem getting these tyres up to temperature. Um, for the, don't forget, these were brand new, unscrubbed tyres, so they always have that shiny finish on them, trying to get heat through. But look how far back he is on the circuit. <laughs> you know, the leaders have already gone through Indianapolis and probably are not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he is miles back, and you can't recover that kind of distance. Um, you can't make up that kind no. of distance. Look, look where the leaders are now. That's extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah. He's got a lot of... Well, I tell you what, his onboard's going to be worth watching <laughs> yeah. at the end of this from the guys in France. If you are just joining us, good morning. Tim Harvey and me, John Hindorf, getting ready for the Le Mans 24 hours with a beautiful little starter portion of Porsche Carrera Cup with the three championships vying for their own points. A couple of uh, wildcard entries as well. We've got a couple of Asian entries from Australia as well as the safety car begins to pull away coming into the Porsche curves that is such a fast turn in there and it's pretty smooth there as well the bank has been pushed back from drivers left and then through the Porsche curves team a little bit different from when you raced here but still very much a rhythm part of the circuit yeah very much so a fast part of the track these cars have a certain amount of downforce nothing like as much as uh, um, uh, the GT cars in the Le Mans race so mechanical grip is a big factor here here we see that great shot of the cars coming through uh, the on corner. the safer barrier here, which is a relatively new addition, American style, so there are the form inserts behind that. So that's closed that part of the track down, but it absorbs any impact energy. We're going to see some drafting here. We're going to see some slipstreaming yeah. as well, aren't we? Surprisingly, these cars don't give off a huge slipstream. Right. It's a very small slipstream, even you know at the speed they go. Very efficient car, but it doesn't get... And again, that goes back to the point, it's not a downforce car. It doesn't give off a huge tow. The drivers are commenting on that already. Xavier Masson just going through the shot there, that's the man leading the A category of the Benelux Championship. Right, Tim is rubbing his hands. <laughs> it is time to get racing. The first race of Le Mans Saturday and Sunday, the 85th Grand Prix d'Endurance to come later on this afternoon. Hope you'll join us for that over on Radio Le Mans. But here we are, ready to go for Porsche Carrera Cup at the 85th edition of the Le Mans 24 hours and this is absolutely perfect weather condition this morning it's been hot all week it's around about 20 21 degrees Celsius on the track side will the safety car pull off yes it will it's one of the new Panamera uh, shooting brakes that's the first time I've seen that car and we wait for the green lights they're on and the pull man lets all from the French Championship gets a reasonable run but the 908 on the left hand side of the picture with the stripes across the bonnet Dino Zamparelli has got position going into the first right hander and he's gone through into the lead that is a really important move from Zamparelli and his carnage bringing out behind off into the dust now that on all the way through into the first left hander there's going to be carnage here, Tim, and this is exactly what those guys in the midfield didn't want. Yeah, and Kamish at the front had contact on the exit of the chicane. He's still going, but he had contact as well. Yeah, the 901 car, Dan Kamish, that's the 928 in there. That's Charlie Eastwood, and he's got a problem. He was the third best of the Porsche Carrera Cup GP qualifiers, but Dino Zamparelli made his move, made his move early, and that is really 
important for the championship. Yeah, he said he was going to do it, and then fact has turned out to be the safest place to be, hasn't it? Yeah, exactly so. Rivera in second now, then more. Where's the, where's the poor man going? Latour's dropped way down. He must have been involved in there. Kamish still running. Oliphant in seventh position now. He's climbed up through the standings. He started a little further back than that on the grid. Let's see if we can work out what happened here. Yeah, in the dust, these cars come back across the track. But look at the... Ah, oh, we missed it. Yeah, they went straight on into the left-hander. Yeah. Now, there's Eastwood having his issue. But, uh, well, we've got yellow flags out, so clearly full course caution has been called for. Start of the race is being investigated as well by our stewards. Well, one of the things is these drivers, they pretty much knew that they wouldn't abort the start because of the 61 uh, limping away. Uh, because of the, uh, the the 61 car field, the drivers at the front sort of knew they wouldn't have yeah. bought the start. It was almost a given that they were going to go. So it, there's a great temptation as a driver to jump the start, isn't there? Yeah. And maybe that's what they're looking at. It looked pretty clean from the front. That is the 991 going through. That's another good Porsche number as well. Oh, dear. Oh, there's the top. That's, that's the poor man. Yeah. That was the man that was on pole position. That's a right rear Michelin puncture. Now, Looking at Kamish's car, because his car was bounced up into the air. He's got away with that. that. If he has, he's been a very lucky boy. Oh, that's one of the Carrera Cup GB Elinas. cars. Yeah, TOS. Really disappointing. He was really looking forward to this race. And that was one of the cars that got written off at Walter Park at the last Carrera Cup GB race. Yeah, that's another and one of the Tandy cars. It's a reshelled car. That's buried deep in the gravel. And that's Lewis Plato, Plato. in the background. Yes. Another one of the JTR cars. So that looks to me as though that's happened around about grid line four or five. Ewan Mackay in there as well from the GB Championship. Elinas, we saw the 999. He started on the outside of row number six with Lewis Plato yeah. alongside him. So I think they were hit by the cars coming back yeah, on the circuit. So. And Eastwood was sixth on the bridge as well, so exactly the same There place. you go, yeah. So what a disaster for a lot of those British runners who were just in that group together. But, of course, the pole man as well. Yeah, and that's all the hard work done by... Florian Latour with a puncture. Now, the good thing is he can get that car back, and he, if he can get that car back and get another tyre stuck on, he'll not lose that much ground here. You are joking, you've got you in six. Oh, I mean, he's not, he's going to be... Mind you, they are scoring points individually exactly. in their championship, so he's still got a possibility. Let's not rule it out. What I'm waiting to see is where the 555 car got up to in all of that. From the back of the grid, was he able... Yes, he's... Made up, uh, he's up to 52, nine places, Andela. So, and he's gone past a few of the French cars, at least one or two of them. Uh, but it is. Oh, Xavier Massen was involved in that as well. That's the Benelux points leader. So, yeah. Xavier Massen uh, is, has been involved in that incident as well. And was that Massen then who originally went off on the left hand side and caused that big. Dust storm. Let's have a look. Yes, I think it is. Or is no, that's Masson going through into that. Now watch. Oh my goodness, that's a very oh, heavy. This is, this is the angle. angle. There it is. Watch Camish's. Oh, it wasn't Camish. It was Eastwood's car. It was that went Eastwood. Up in the air, yeah. Hence the broken front suspension. Yeah. And there is yeah. Eastwood struggling at the bottom of the hill. And that's going to hurt his championship Massive. position because. Uh, one of the things that's happened with this race is that um, they were only allowed 20 cars from uh, the British Championship to enter. They obviously have more cars in the British series than that, so they've had to enact a rule where they uh, drivers are allowed to drop a score uh, from their championship right. points. It was previously all rounds to count, but you can't really have that if you then go give someone an entry at one of the races. Yep. So they're allowed to drop a score. Now, Dan Camish is going to miss the Snetter race, which is two, two races race in Porsche Super Cup that weekend. So he's been battling with Charlie Eastwood to build up enough of a points advantage to drop one score and miss Snetterton and still be in the championship hunt. This is going to help Camish massively. So, he, yes, because there's two races there, only one of those Snetterton races could be one of his drop rounds. Well, or does he have to compete in it? No, he to drop it. no, no, he, 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 can, he can drop it. He right. can drop it. That's, that's right. not a problem. But... Uh, it still means he's got to finish all the other races. Yes, and he hasn't here. It's not what Charlie Eastwood wanted. Now somebody's got some nice Porsche souvenirs there. It's the very expensive pieces of plastic. 
one of the beneficiaries actually of this um, of this sort of rule was that Ross Wiley, the English driver from Scotland, first year in uh, Carrera Cup this year with Slide Sports, wasn't going to be in this race at all. But Tuesday morning, he got a call from the UK. One of the French guys has dropped out. Would you like to come and take his place? I've got my car on the trailer. And he was on here like a shot, and he's been loving every minute. Lewis Plato's car being taken away by the Snatch Tractor. Uh, there'll be no further part taken by the 977 car. Oh, a lot of debris on the track, yes. obviously. Yes, that's where people have gone. That, that's exactly where the cars came straight back across the track. The gravel trap slowed them down a bit, but not, we're not going to go green here, Tim. We're going to have another eight and a half miles of Slow safety car. Cautious. Yeah, but of good course... chance to get your pictures, I suppose, if you track <laughs> <excellent. laughs> <laughs> the other thing is that, of course, these cars have all their radiators at the front. Yeah. So a little bit of damage at the front blows the radiator. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that's in actual fact the reason um, why several cars had problems in practice, broke, hit the floppy disks, broke the radiators, took no further part. Uh, Zamparelli leads behind the safety car. Rivera uh, in second. And he's come up from where on the grid? Oh! Tire coming off the back there. Ah, that'll be that that's was, the old pull, yeah. man. Yeah, Latour, uh, Florian Latour in the Almeras, the Martinet by Almeras Racing. Almeras, very with Almeras brothers, very well known for running Porsches down through the years, 917s, 956s, 962s, and have a great history here at Le Mans. And they'll be disappointed that their man, having planted a Don Paul. Now that is the 17. Oh, do you see that's see, see the water out. coming out the bottom yeah. there? That radiator's. Right. Well, good thing is though that that coolant will um, will evaporate fairly quickly in the heat. And that was one of the guys who's come the furthest distance. That was uh, a wild card entry from Brazil, Miguel Paludo in the 17 car. Huge amount of interest in Brazil in Porsche Carrera Cup. I've seen them there supporting the WEC back down through the years where they quite often have 45 or 50 cars in several classes there. And uh, when we were uh, racing WEC in Brazil, always worth getting trackside to watch those cars in Sao Paulo. And that is a very long way for a very short part of the race here. Just trying to work out where Rivera came from because uh, he was on the second row of the grid, so he must have picked his way round the back. So he's now the leading French runner. Uh, in third place behind the safety car is the another one of the uh, invitations. That's Philip Morin, the uh, another Martinet by Almeras car, but that's a Swedish championship car. So not really one of the uh, major championship here. Then the Frenchman in behind that, or French championship runner, is the 53 car. Now, he had a great start. Um, came from the fifth row of the grid. Ottavan Uggeven. Not a very French name there. And then Dan Kamish in fifth. Hugh Mackay in sixth. Tom Oliphant Ol in seventh. seventh. Uh, we've got a Lapierre in the 911 in it. Now, we, met, we mentioned him. Uh, picking the 911, and that's Christophe Lapierre for Sebastian Loeb Racing. He came from the outside of the eighth row, so he's done all right. Donada Beltoise in there as well, so mostly French and Great Britain Cup runners at the front. Now, this is the last year, of course, of this iteration of the Carrera Cup car. I've been lucky enough to watch a, a few rounds of the 2017 car as is now in the States, which has got uh, conservatively another 40 odd horsepower, taking it a smidge away, if not a bit more than 500 of your standard best, horsepower. Best horses. Well, yeah. I've been lucky enough to drive both of them. All right, cars, okay, actually. I'm, off. <laughs> I'm off now. Well, you drove them um, back to back, though, And I did, you? drove them both back to back on the same day, and the difference is quite incredible. Really? Uh, and in fact, I was doing a day with Charlie Eastwood, and he was driving the new car, and I was driving Dan Camish's car, and I was blown away by the improvement. Then we swapped cars, and he couldn't believe it going the other way, how much slower the, the standard car felt. Um, so, yeah, the new uh, 991 Gen 2 car that's yeah. in Supercar, and in America 
it's a real beast. And the drivers, when they do get it, are going to have to learn a little bit more throttle control. Rear tyre wear is yes. a big factor on it because of the extra power. Um, but at the moment, uh, these guys are just, well, hoping that safety car goes in and they can get to enjoy the full Le Mans circuit rather than be behind the safety car with only 34 minutes to go. Yeah, already 10 minutes behind the safety car. It'll be about another 90 seconds to two minutes before we get back to the line. I'm straining my neck looking off to the right-hand side. Decent crowd here this morning. Uh, overall numbers for Le Mans down quite a bit this year, but still, it'll, I'm sure it'll still be 200,000 uh, by the time everybody has filed in. And it looks to me, looking down the list, like Alex Martin is leading the um, Pro-Am 1 sector of Porsche Carrera Cup GB, and Graham Mundy, the Pro-Am 2 sector, no, sorry, Peter Carl Henney, the Pro-Am 2 sector. Uh, interesting, Alex Martin actually has raced here in the long, the long 24 hours with his father Rupert in a Ferrari. So he has had some prior experience. Peter Car Henny, I know, is absolutely loving this weekend. What's not to like? Ah, the safety car lights are out as they go round. Arnage, been reprofiled over the last few years, used to be very close wall, about three feet away from, to the right of that curve cam there. Beautiful day here, as it has been at the Mon all week. I've been here since last Friday setting up. And I, I think we barely had half an hour where the sun hasn't been shining. It's brightness during the daylight hours. A little bit cooler last night, which was uh, a pleasant to change. There's Alex Martin, the 902 car. In the multicolour. Lose that in the car park, would you? <laughs> That's good, I like that, though. Yeah. It wouldn't have been too long ago, Tim, when we would have been looking at a whole raft of plain white Porsches, thank goodness, for uh, for vinyl wraps. There are some fabulous liveries mm. out there, some absolutely fabulous. All these cars get supplied in white. Some are paint painted, some are liveried, as you can say, with vinyl, but uh, we're about to go racing again. Now, this is down to Dino Zamparelli. He is taking control of the field. He's allowed to drop away from the safety car, but not too much. Race directors don't like to see too much weaving either as you come back to the green flag, so they'll settle down in a moment. It'll be a single file restart, so not as at the start when they were side by side. Watch the safety car indicating to pull into the pit lane. How very lovely. And now Dino Zamparelli, Rivera behind him, then Moran Govan, Dan Kamish has got Mackay, Oliphant and Lapierre, fast starting Lapierre. Now the right foot goes hard down from Dino Zamparelli and he's caught one or two, napping further behind. The gaps are already opening up, but he hasn't shaken off the Frenchman, the 21 car behind, and he's right in the wheel tracks. Defending already, goes over to the pit wall, trying to make it harder. Now he's got to stay there, they'll be watching that. He drifts, but that's all right. Side by side through that extremely fast right hand and into the Dunlop. Breaking area for Dunlop, well, he's done the hard bit. That's the bit that he needed to get done, but he hasn't shaken off Rivera in second place. No, good start by Rivera. He looks quick, doesn't he? Uh, Kamish has dropped away a little bit in fourth, which makes me wonder if there is any issue with his car. He's normally lightning on restarts. Yeah, he's got Goodman right behind him. It's the orange-fronted car that Tim's talking about there, the blue and white behind him. Fourth and fifth, with him sixth position. Ewan Mackay, the 981. And Gubin has actually passed Ewan Mackay. He was in fifth place at the start. Yes, so good point. Pass it to the Donald Pesces. Look, side by side on the Molsan straight. Yeah, coming out of Tet Rouge. Great run by the second place Porsche. That red, white, and black guy is already through. And down towards the green flags are waving. Don't worry about that. That's just to remind everybody that we're racing again. Now, braking area. This is coming down into. The first chicane, the two chicanes here, by the way, the drivers will tell you the second one is much tighter than the first. It's not true, they're exactly the same. Looked like a miss of the chicane, the middle part of it, by Morin in third place, the 86 car, Philippe Morin from the Swedish Championship. But he's managed to stay ahead of Kamish. Look at the stream of cars. It's halfway down the Mulsanne Strait. That's a fantastic sight. And remember, most of these drivers will have never experienced slipstreaming like this ever before. Zamparelli looking for a way round. He'll have to go round the outside into the second chicane. Further back, Ewan Murray Mackay looking down the inside. Kamish holding... Uh, oh, oh. Right, right again. Right. Yeah, that is the third place car. The Swedish driver, or the Swedish championship driver, Philip Morin, qualified in the third row, inside the third row, and Zamparelli looks for the lead round the outside, side by side. Oh, look at this stuff, this is brilliant. Well, 
there is a hole in the air being made, and these guys are learning about drafting, about slipstreaming. First and second, absolutely together. Zambarelli and Rivera. Rivera leading now into the heavy braking area at Mulsanne Corner. Really difficult entry to that corner because you're almost coming down a slip road there and already turning to the right as you're braking. Kamish was massively late on the brakes. He closed up big time on the first two. They're all sort of trying to break this toe, aren't they? Yeah. Um, I said slipstream it didn't work particularly here, but it seems to be that it is. They're all getting closer and closer together. Well, maybe they're running a bit closer now than they would who are running in practice because this is where it counts. This is for championship points, and Zamparelli pulls out the driver's left. He's got to go the long way around here. Great sector of the track here. An extremely fast into Indianapolis. Big banging here. Get down to the inside, those curbs are quite severe. Some parts of the circuit, they're pretty flat, but there, you will feel the rattle in your fillings. Now to Arnage, the right-hander. You're heading for home now, towards the end of the lap. And the top four or five have come back together, Tim. Yeah, and this is the first full-speed racing lap. They're about to take the Porsche curves for the first time. I'm holding Pretty my <laughs> Exactly so, and, and it looks like Zamparelli's under pressure now. Kamish with that orange-fronted car. That's an audacious manoeuvre down the outside, but look at Zamparelli, he's forced to the inside, he's actually making ground on the leader. Another bunch of cars following in behind, behind Morin in the 86 there. Remember, he has already made a mistake, so the top quartet getting away through the Porsche curves for the first time. Left, right, left, right, all about keeping the momentum going and trying to stay on the right line. If you get a moment at half a car's width off early on, you run for the whole lot. Yeah, the Kamish and Zamparelli looked like they were going to be turning in uh, side by side to the Porsche curve. Kamish was on the outside. He obviously decided at this point the race discretion was the better part of yeah, and that was a sensible decision. The car in uh, the ninth place, oh, sorry, the number nine car, Jeffrey Donada, had a very good middle sector. He must have got a good tour, French championship car. He's sitting in eighth position at the moment, seeing the fastest laps coming through 4 11, 4 10. For the 27 car further down, that's Yolandas has a clot for Sebastian Loeb Racing. Now, just to give you an idea, that's not far away from a GT3 car time round here. We've got some GT3s in the road to Le Mans, and that's how quick these cars are on only their first racing lap. Tim and I both think they will get quicker. Top five now coming back together as Morin has recovered from his little off and lack of loss of concentration earlier on. Tom Oliphant there. The 915 car just got to look at, there he is. You can just see him there with the green stripes on the front and the white doors. And the white front bumper signifying he's had a, a renewed bumper on this weekend, like so many others. But yeah, these cars are on steel brakes. And remember, these get very cold then down the straight. So yeah. I think that was what Morin was suffering from in the start. Cold right. brakes, um, you know, back in the day, we used to have to tap the pedal with our left foot to put some temperature in the brakes before we got to the end of the straight. But uh, they're all up to full working temperature now. So down. Oh, that was a very opportunist manoeuvre there from Dino Zamparelli in the 908, going for the lead. Again, he's backed out of it, but he was the fastest man in the first sector. Now, down the second sector is the run from Turt Rouge, which is out of the circuit permanent onto this long strip. This used to be the main road down to Tours. Now, there is a motorway that's been built now, but this still is public road uh, on... Obviously not today, that would be a bit silly if there was things coming in the other direction, but you can drive this part of the circuit for the rest of the year. Zamborelli moving around in the mirrors, or Rivera, our leader. Alessio Rivera then for the Tsunami RT team in the French Championship. And he, at the moment, doing the best job of the French runners. Not in the top six. In the French Championship, Andalou, we need to keep an eye open for the 5-5-5, up to 40th position, so 21 cars passed then by Julien Andalou, who's the leader in the Championship. He's having fun, as are these guys down in the Mulsanne. Oh, down the inside, what a manoeuvre this is, if he can pull this off. That is brilliant stuff from Dan Kamish, and he keeps it on the island. Just stopped it before the exit, and he might have been slow out there, he might yeah. get repassed before uh, uh, the turn into uh, uh, Indianapolis, but we'll see, but that was a very late but Kamish has always been really good on the brakes, and that's his forte. Now in second position, Zamparelli in trouble now in third. 53 guard Gouverneur is down, he's inside. That will, I think that pass will be made here, although he's, he's got to get it done now before they get to Indianapolis. He's got this curve, he's very fast. Right-hander. No, 
Now this, and there is Andelur, that is the French leader, the 555 car, 21 cars passed. Oh, was that a little tap there? No, I think you just frightened him out of the way, if I'm honest. <laughs> OK, then. <laughs> that was the 9 or that was the, the Parsons car, wasn't it? The 904 car? Yes, Peter it was. Parsons. Peter Parsons, yeah. yeah. So there's Rivera leading from Zamparelli. Uh, from uh, Camish, rather, with Zamparelli now in third position. Zamparelli seems to have recovered his composure, Tim, but he's going to come under pressure again here. Into the Porsche curves, top five. That's a marvellous sight. Sunshine and day like this. Right out. Great sound as well. These cars are running the uh, unsilent Super Cup exhaust. Not quite as sexy as the RSR. Oh, isn't that great? In the, in the, in the, uh, in the, the mid-engine RSR car in the, uh, the Mod 24 hours, but they nevertheless do sound absolutely fantastic. Just looking down, Tom Oliphant in eighth position. Uh, Ross Wiley in 14th. So that's one, two, three, four, five. The Porsche Cup. GP runners in the top 15. It's the French guys who make up the rest. The best of the Benelux drivers at the moment is the the 98 car in 18th position, but they're having a crack. And that's one of the B-class runners, uh, actually, from uh, Benelux as well. Meantime, on to another lap. Halfway through now as the settled down into their racing, lost about 11 or 12 minutes after that first lap incident, which has taken out some big names in Porsche Carrera Cup GB. Oh, a little bit of a gap has developed just uh, behind Dan Kamish now to Zamparelli, but that's uh, somebody happy right on the back of uh, Kamish, but uh, there's a little gap developed now, which uh, might give uh, uh, Kamish an opportunity to attack uh, Rivera, maybe into the first chicane, maybe into the second, but now he's pulled off a good pass at uh, Molsan. Maybe he's chosen that as his overtaking place. You can do it, can't you, as we saw. He had to go up onto the kerb. There's a little right-hand kink before the proper corner. He's in a nice position here, looking at it again, goes down to the driver's left. He's come out nice and early. Look how wide it is there. I, he's, oh, he's got his nose ahead for a moment. Nothing between them. He's gone round the outside. And into the first again. Oh, now, did he get round the corner? Who emerges first? He's held onto it. Well done, Dan Kamish. Absolute last of the late breakers. Round the outside into the first chicken. Yes, please, he'll be well, wanting to see that on the highlights. I was glad to see him come out the Give corner side. because he had that little lock-up going in. But, of course, he was probably a little bit slower coming out the corner. And, of course, you can repart here. Yeah, because it's such a long run. Any of these runs between the chicanes down into the Mulsan corner would be as long as the longest straight these guys normally run on, almost three abreast behind them. But it's Porsche Carrera Cup GB runner Dan Kamish that leads in the 901 and a shortcut taken there. Yeah, and Zamparelli off the track as well. <laughs> now, you need to be careful doing that because there's all kinds of detritus in there. This has been a public road, including up to this morning when it was closed, and there'll be all kinds of little bits of gravel on there, and the Michelin tyres are pretty robust, but they won't like a lot of that. No, you don't want to be running over the stones. All these cars came here looking absolutely immaculate, new windscreens in them, fresh bodywork, and, uh, of course, they've all oh, been gone out wide on the exit that of was Mackay, Mulsanne. wasn't it, coming through? Mackay in the blue fronted car has made that position back, which is great. And Zamparelli's got back ahead of the 86 again for fourth position. Kamish Rivera, Guven, now Zamparelli. I think Ewan Mackay has followed him through as well. And there's Zamparelli. Should just give a shout out in the classes once again because Alex Martin is still leading um, uh, Pro Am 1 in 17th place overall for Carrera Cup GB. And I think Peter Carheny is still leading Pro Am 2. Yeah, French leader at the moment is the Rivera car in second from Kuvan. And then that very quick number nine car set the fastest lap earlier on. Jeffrey Donada in the uh, uh, Sebastian Loeb racing car. Best of the Belgians is a B-class runner, as we said, Glenn Van Pais, who is in 18th position leading at the moment. Oh, and there he is going off. He was the Belgian leader. That's Arnage, and he's outbraked himself. Curse of the commentator there. Happened whilst we were speaking about him. Just saw it on the replay there. So that then will allow the 33 car back ahead with this Yannick Hugaz.
who is one of the speed lover in the cars, 33, and he is now in the lead of the Belgian part of the championship. This is great. Kamish, this is, this, trying to break the tour here. He is. I mean, it's one thing to follow, because you can use the other car as a braking marker. Much harder to lead, but Kamish is doing it with aplomb at the moment. He's really having a completely standout stellar year this year. He's won the last two British Carrera Cup championships. Ah, oh, Graham Mundy, what a shame. He's been really enjoying the Team Parker racing guy. Uh, 942 car, he's out. But Kamish has been uh, having his first year full-time in Super Cup as well. Um, he had a second and third at Barcelona, which was a great start to his year. And then a brilliant Monaco, quite spectacularly brilliant Monaco, where he finished second with fastest lap to Miguel Amaro. How difficult is it going to be for him then, given what you were saying about the differences between the 2017 Super Cup car, which will become Porsche Carrera Cup GP, uh, car next year, jumping back into this earlier version. How it's gone the 19 there as well. Yeah, it is. It's harder for him to probably to uh, uh, jump back into the Super Cup car because right. if he drives it like the UK car, he'll be having wheel spin and oversteer everywhere. So it's probably harder going that way. Ah, this is what happened. Oh, so that's the Cheney car going backwards at pace, but I don't think quite hit the. The barrier and was that the 928 that was in there as well? Oh, was that the oh, recovery? Yeah, I wonder if Charlie got back to but the pits, pits and has had some repair work yeah. done under the safety car and rejoined. Running in 32nd position, which doesn't sound great, but he's you know he's up there in the top 10 or 11 of the British category. Wow, so they did turn that car around very, very quickly for Charlie. That yeah, could be important. That's the red line racing boys. Yeah, well, they work hard. Don't Very they? professional team. Now, I thought Zambrelli was sort of dropping off. I thought maybe his mm. car was quicker at the start of the race and then going off a little bit, but he's back in the hunt again now. Still 17 minutes to go. Yeah, yellow flags at the second chicane. And someone's gone off in the middle. Oh, that was a bit naughty. Overtaking under yellow there. That's uh, Julian Donata. Sebastian Love racing car. Don't like to see that when there's... No, not when there's a crane there. Yeah, and that's why there's double yellows. Now we've now got the that. slow zone, which yeah. means 80 kilometres maximum. Yeah, I think, yes, that may have been required slightly further back up the track. This is something that these guys won't be used to either. They had the driver's briefing earlier in the week. So... Effectively, think of it as having a safety car on this part of the track. There's no overtaking. Everybody just slows down. However, you're not allowed to close up. So what it should... It's like when you used to play skate electrics as a kid and somebody would go off and say, stop, everybody stops until you put back, go. And that... So you sort of keep the same areas around the track. Um, now, where's the 555? Andela, the French championship lead up the 29th now from 61st. Yeah, there he is. He's had a very good recovery so far. That's uh, Graham Mundy's car that's yeah. been craned away. C clear view there of the lifting uh, straps at the top of there. There's the 19. That's the Cheney car that we saw with uh, side by side with Charlie Eastwood having a little incident. Charlie Eastwood to 32nd position. And in the A class is. Oh, I reckon he's in the top half dozen of uh, Carrera Cup GB A class. He's got a couple of Class B cars ahead of him, but he's still scoring important points. Remember, only one dropped score for Porsche Carrera Cup GB this year. But they score points down to 15th place. Yes. So he in will... A and B. Yes, so yeah. he will be scoring points undoubtedly. Only one point for 15th, but where do you say you reckon? I, I reckon, well, one, two, three, four, five, six. In A class, I think he's seventh or eighth. Yeah, well, he's going to score good points. Seventh, then, so good seventh recovery. Um, he's going to get uh, nine but, points to that. Although Kamish will get twenty if he still wins. Well, and that's down to the team yeah. getting him turned around. You know, it would have been easy. Good for the driver for getting it back. That's good heads up. Get the car back. We'll see if we can fix it. Bang another wheel and tire on. Pull the bodywork out of the way. Assuming he doesn't get a penalty from the clerk of the course for that move. Uh, <laughs> yes. the yeah, that was ironically that was after he came back <laughs> yeah. out the pit lane. Graham Mundy's team park a racing car being rather unceremoniously hauled out of the way by the snatch tractor. Let's have a look at lap times, shall we? Uh, lap times. Uh, fastest lap is a, a four minutes eight point four, which is quicker than the pole time. Yes. The pole time is a four minute eight point five. So they are starting to go quicker. 
and it seems Sebastian Loeb Racing have got their cars dialed in because that's another one of SLR's car, Valentin Hasek Lott, uh, in that car, sitting at the moment in 27th position. He's just taken the fastest time. No, he's, at, he's in ninth. He's in ninth, excuse me. Yes, yeah, so yeah, excuse me, the number 27 car, he's in ninth position. Um, he has taken that lap away from his teammate who's dropped out of contention. So what's happened to that car? Yes, he has. So there's been, an, there's been a bit of carnage here. Uh, Tom Oliphant, not a bad lap last time around. Oh, yes, straight out. Now, this is the advantage, Tim, of having the slow zones. We haven't neutralised the whole circuit, only the... There's seven and three-quarter miles that's perfectly OK for racing on, so once you get past the incident, we're back to racing. And I think that's a great idea on a circuit this long. It is, and Kamish was on the ball, wasn't he? Certainly was. Oh. There is there is Julian Donada, and we're straight back to yellows yeah. again. Oh, that's unfortunate. Now, this is for the Chini car in the Porsche curves, just off the driver's left, uh, on, went straight on at the next right-hander when they were side-by-side side with Charlie Eastwood. But very difficult when you have a slow zone and then you have a green flag and then there's another slow zone. Yeah. Very difficult for the drivers to manage not running into each other. Yes, absolutely. And you've got to be on your, le on your metal. Dan Kamish, then. Just holding on to that lead at the moment with the time ticking away, coming down to 13 minutes of what was a 45-minute contest. We're at the 85th running of the Le Mans 24 hours. Tim Harvey and John Hindoff with you in the sunshine here as Porsche Carrera Cup GB has its seventh round as part of this festival of Porsche racing here at Le Mans. So we have a yellow flag zone at section, sectors 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, I'll pop 23, for a cup of 24, 25, 20, up to 35. That's a lot of yellow. Yeah, hang on, 26, and then there's a gap, and oh. then it's 30 to 35. Come on, Tim, <laughs> give us the full picture. The drivers manage the slow zone sectors by having it in third gear on the pit lane speed limiter button. Right. That makes the... Uh, the that's 80 it, he clicks. Ah, oh, right, that's very clever. So they don't need a second limiter button. They just know that it's that revs in third. Very good. Now, green flags at the start-finish line, appropriately enough, so Dan Kamish has to do it again. Five laps completed as they cross the line. This time they'll head six laps completed. They'll head on to their seventh and Kamish then with 12 and a half minutes to go. And look at the side by side action right up on the pit wall. Sam Morelli trying to make his way through and has done. That's another bold manoeuvre as the black and white car. That is the Alessio Rovera car. Good it's move by Zach Morelli because he got the car stopped. He left a little bit of racing room on the apex there. That was a good move, but a re good restart by Kamish. Look, he has a nice little gap. Heck of a restart from Kamish, and as he heads down through the old forest, as the motorcycles peel off to the right there on the Bugatti circuit, on the circuit permanent, as the locals call it. All of this part has been resurfaced since we were here last year for the 24 hours. It's much smoother, and that first uphill right-hander towards Dunlop is absolutely gloriously smooth, and all the drivers commenting on just how much time they're making there this year. Hugh Mackay there in the two-ton blue car with the yellow bib on the front splitter. Now, he's got uh, a bit of competition behind him from Philippe Morant, the uh, Swedish... A Porsche Carrera Cup driver who's up alongside. Oh, this is all going to be a bit interesting as they come through. Hasse Klot in behind there with a very fast car. Oh, there's another little mistake on the brake. That's called brakes again, Tim, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And uh, he lost out there, and Mackay retakes that position, as is his right to do. You mustn't gain an advantage by going straight on. And Oliphant now takes the position. Yeah, very good opportunist manoeuvre there by that black and green bonnet on that car. Watch the 27 car in behind the two-ton blue car there of... Mackay, because that is a very fast Sebastian Loeb racing car, and he's got position as he comes down to the inside. That's Hasiklot and gets through. Valentin Hasiklot then in a sort of Porsche works colour scheme. They do like that black, white and grey colour. There's one of his teammates, the nine car coming through. That's uh, Julian Donada, who had the fastest lap early on. Hasiklot has him now. He looks to be the man on the move, he doesn't is. he? He's he's got a good car under him. Just this lap uh, just before the yellows, but now he's overtaking, so he's flying. And there's no yellow flag zones anywhere around the circuit now, so we should see people racing around the whole of the eight and a half miles. Into Mozart Corner, right hand side here. That's where they used to hang the pit boards out back in 
the very early days. I have to say neither Tim or I were here in, in those days because A, there wasn't a pit wall at the start-finish straight, and because there was no Ford chicane then, you were going so fast when you came past the pits, you wouldn't have been able to see the pit board anyway. Now look at Rivera coming back on Camish. It's impossible to break away here with these uh, uh, drafting down the long straights because Camish had an excellent restart. Rivera's right on him again. Had the better part of a second and off onto the dirt, onto the dirty part of the circuit, coming down into the Arnage, and uh, Indianapolis and Arnage sector side by side. Then I think that was was that Mackay defending at the background. Oh, he's got oh, it's, it's Oliphant that's gone through, isn't it? That's a fantastic maneuver there from Tom Oliphant. Two British drivers are battling for position and therefore points in the championship. Very much so. Yeah. Side by a little bit of damage on the front of Oliphant's car. The splitter just tucking itself down on the right hand side. That's not what you want on this circuit. Morin coming round, making it three four wide yellow flags or yellow lights flashing there. So we should see some waved yellows as well coming into the Porsche curves. The drivers don't seem to have seen that, or if they have, they completely ignore it. There's a car off facing the wrong direction there. As into the pit lane comes the number 19 car that we saw having issues earlier on. But that's ahead of this battle for the lead as they come round to complete their seventh lap with eight and a half minutes to go. I reckon they might just get three more. Yeah, they might get three more depending on when they come through and if we get a clean run. We've seen them going round in just over four minutes, four minutes eight, four minutes nine at the front of the field. Kamish is again had a good run in that third sector. He's good in the third and the first sectors. Doesn't seem to be quite so quick down the tubes. Well, it seems to me like it, the advantage he eeks out round the corners, he loses in the draft, which is the way it should be here. Mm -hmm. You know, he loses it in the draft because um, he came through the Dunlop Bessons last lap with a little bit of a lead and through the route, and then they were on him. Uh, Julian Andler the, Andler, the leader in the French Championship, is up to 27, but he's in under investigation. Now, I wonder if that was for that incident we saw with... Peter Parsons, uh, Peter pa uh, Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. And that might just cost him his... What at the, at the moment has been a tremendous fight back, starting at 61st and last, currently 27th, and in a point-scoring position in the French Championship. 27 is one of the French Cup cars, that is... A third position in category for Valentin Hassiklot in one of those very fast, certainly very fast in a straight line, Sebastian Loeb racing cars. And yes, it is that Sebastian Loeb, by the way. He's got his own team, endurance racing, as well as Porsche Carrera Cup here in France. Yeah, he did some Porsche Carrera Cup France racing himself, didn't he? But there was that lovely occasion at Monaco when he and Ogier, Sebastian Ogier raced against each other in uh, Carrera Cup. And Ewan Mackay is the one who loses out to that car that's very fast in a straight line. Tom Oliphant's just broken away from that battle, which is effectively for sixth and seventh position. Has it clots gone through? Dan Camish leads from the first of the French cars. Uh, Rivera in second, Zamparelli second in GB, and will get second place points for that. Ewan Mackay, though, coming back on Has it and Moran right in behind them as well. Philippe Moran, the Swedish wild card entry and there's a battle for the lead as well as again Kamish has been caught he had a, almost a second going across the line it was down to two tenths at the first split which was at the exit onto the Mulsanne straight and now it's nothing at all side by side here as well as has it in the black white and grey car he's muscling his way through on the 86 Moran having a look at him as well and Ewan there in the two-tone blue and yellow car Ewan Mackay having a bit of a look my goodness the battle for positions here is absolutely fast and furious. It really is, isn't it? Again, Kamish under pressure into the uh, end of the lap down into Monsanto, but look at him on the brakes, really strong on the brakes. He's doing just enough to hold that at the moment. Uh, the timing sector's still coming up purple, so yeah. these guys are still setting personal and oh. quickest overall time. And there's another mistake for the 86 car going wide, Philippe Moran, the Swedish Carrera Cup runner. And that's going to cost him not only momentum but places top four have gotten away again Tom Oliver Oliver in, at the moment for him splendid isolation that's third place in Carrera Cup GB points he'll be very happy with that he will but you know what the guys behind in that battle will be absolutely loving this yeah racing you know side by side at 180 miles an hour and that's what the top speed of these cars is here they'll be loving it yeah, they're going to have pretty much a season of racing stories just from this one race, aren't they, by the time they go? It'll be, oh, and I was down here and I was round there, and then did you see that thing where in the second chicane I went down the inside and I was up on the kerb at Mulsanne? 
more dust being thrown up. Don't worry so much about that. The bits outside the dotted white lines uh, aren't normally used as racing circuit. As Beltoise has a look down the outside, that's Vincent uh, Beltoise. He's going to try and do the round the outside manoeuvre on Dino Zamparelli. Dino, I think, a little too experienced to let that happen to him, but that's very quick into there. That's the Porsche curves. The guys on the viewing bank there from the campsite got a great view of watching these cars turn in. That must be awesome, turning into there. What do you reckon, 155, 160 into there? Uh, probably, yeah, 100. Oh, Camish, a big oh. slide there. Now, is this a sign the rear tyres are struggling? Yes. He may be struggling a little bit, and all of a sudden, Rivera's all over him. He's leading the Carrera Cup GP, but he wants better than that. He wants top step of the overall podium through the Ford chicane. Added to slow the cars down before they came across the start finish line for the 24 hour of Le Mans racing. Now across the line. Kamish has been pretty good in this first sector. He's going to have to find his best here. And Zamborelli now establishing himself in third position. He's watching this battle. What a grandstand scene he's got as they head up the hill. And it's steeply uphill here. Helps you breaking into this left hander. It does. Well, we call Le Mans the English race that happens in France, so True. national pride at stake here. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> top right. Top British driver Dan Camish against Rivera, the top French driver. And if we are in America, we'd say the white flag was out because it is the final lap. The race director has decided that there are just eight and a half miles left as they went around for the start of their ninth lap. So we'll see ten, uh, nine racing laps completed. Excuse me, we've lost a couple due to those incidents. Camish. That is a save and a half. Yeah, in I fact, hope somebody. All the cars yeah, a little wide there, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure whether the drivers will actually know if it's the final lap or not. Radios are allowed, but not all the cars have them because right. in the UK Carrera Cup they don't use them. Right. Okay. Side by side. Might have seen a last lap board, and Rivera goes through. Now that's not the worst thing that can happen. And Kamish will fight back here. He's got the right line, the inside line. Well, he's held on to it. Where do you want to be, Tim? If you're driving now, do you want to be leading or do you want to be second or do you even want to be third in Zamparelli? I think if uh, if Kamish can get out of Molsan in the lead, then he'll win. Right. But, and I would rather be in Kamish. <laughs> if I'd like to be Dan Kamish, I was never that quick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're hiding your light under a bushel, Mr Harvey. Tim Harvey, the uh, most successful, the, has the most wins in Porsche Carrera Cup GP, sitting next to me, John Heindorf, as we're on the last three quarters of a lap, but that's the better part of five and a half, six miles here as Kamish defends again into the second chicane. That's the one that goes right, left, right. Oh, he's gone wide, he's gone wide, he's going to be in real trouble here. He's got to stay on the left-hand side and get the power down early. And he's lost the lead. He has lost the lead to Rivera. And that means that he's got Zamparelli right up his tailpipes now. And look at fourth place, man. Guvan coming round the outside. And that could be a spoiler for the two British guys. Oh, there's a touch. And a bit of the bodywork coming off. I think that was Kamish's car. Yeah, it may have been off the back or the front. Maybe a bit of splitter. Not sure. Will Kamish go for the lunge up the inside? He can't do it. And Guvan comes from fourth and gets to, well, sort of second dish, but goes way too deep into the Mulsanne corner. Well, Dan Kamish has still got top points for the Carrera Cup GB. Damage there for Ewan Mackay as well uh, in the background, I think. Something hanging off that car and Ewan's dropped back a little bit. Yes, he has. I think there's been a touch there between Hassan Klopp and Ewan Mackay. Just a couple of places left to overtake. Will Kamish try and go around the outside into Indianapolis? This is a hugely brave move. He's done it. Oh, and can he hold it on the track? He can. Well, this and is stop it. one of the places that you can go down the inside, Tim, because of that banking, and he held on to it. That's quite a steep exit from there. Defend stoutly into Ardage, and through the Frenchman tries on the outside, and here comes Zamparelli. Zamparelli now might get a run. He has. It's going to be Carrera Cup GP cars proudly flying the Union flag there in the top left-hand side of the windscreen as we, as the drivers look at it, first and second for a moment. Zamparelli with a sniff of top points there. Tom Oliphant sitting in third. Third place in the British Championship, fifth place overall, Kamish is gone. And it looks like Zamparelli is going to establish himself in second. It has done. First and second for Carrera Cup GP. Well, of that move by Kamish just hang Rivera out to dry a touch. That was all the opportunity Zamparelli needed. But Zamparelli isn't done yet. He didn't have to win this race. Not many chances left. Just into the fortune game coming up. He's got a good car underneath him, Tim. He took a really tight line into the final left-hander before they head towards us. They're coming from our left now. And a 
looks like the lead is between the two Carrera Cup GB guys. Flash of the lights indicator on. That'll give him five horsepower more. Surely he's right on the tailpipes. It's a short run to the line here. Kamish has got it now. Surely it's going to be overall victory at top points. Checkered flag is out. Dan Kamish takes it. Dino Zamparelli second, first and second for Porsche Carrera Cup GB. Rivera will take the top spot for France with Gouvan right behind him. Tom Oliphant fifth overall, but third place in Carrera Cup GB. Third of the French, Julian Donada, who had a very quick car ahead of his teammate, Valentin hasse kloss in seventh position. Then the Swedish interloper, uh, Philippe Moran. Voss and Beltoise in ninth position, and Ewan Mackay, tenth, but crucially, in fourth position for the GBs. Yeah, well, all I can say is, what a race. What a race. What a last lap. That was absolutely brilliant. A circuit where these cars can really stretch their legs. And we saw some fantastic racing. Entertainment par excellence. By the way, Julian Andler, who was dead last, got up to 24th position from 61st, and that puts him round about, I think, inside the top 10 of the A class of the French. If you're going to win a race at the morning, win it on the last lap with an outstanding and audacious move into Indianapolis. Quite extraordinary, and Dan Kamish will dine out on that for a very long time, as he should. Absolutely, another feather in his cap, and uh, his career just goes from strength to strength, and uh, a brilliant, brilliant drive, uh, defensively and attacking, and obviously a huge shout-out to uh, the winners of Pro-Am 1, which was Alex Martin in 16th place overall, and Peter Carl Henny in 31st place overall. They also take their points for their championship. They've just gone through, actually. Carl's still finishing. Yeah, and we're only down to 40th finisher uh, at the moment, as uh, we're still waiting for one or two to come through. Uh, we know the 904 car disappeared. Well, Tim, what a race. What a race that was. I loved it, absolutely loved it. You know, th there aren't many times when I wish I was back in a Carrera Cup car racing, but I'm absolutely, I would love to have been out there in that. That was just a fabulous occasion. Guest car next time, mate. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> all oh, all carnage the on the last lap there. Oh, no. That was that was uh, one of the Pro-Am cars, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It's a, the Jennings car, 931, that went around. And he was very lucky not to have been collected by everybody else. Dan Kamish, now, see, this just spooks me out. We've got cars still finishing, and he's coming the wrong way down pit lane. <laughs> That's just wrong. Hindhoff's head's exploded. Well, Tim Harvey and John Hindhoff overlooking what was a stunning race. Lost a couple of laps, I reckon, due to the incident early on. And the key part about that, Tim, was we lost some big hitters at the top of the British Championship there, not what they wanted. That's going to have to be one of their dropped scores. Yeah, I'm looking to see where Charlie Eastwood finished. And he was actually 23rd overall, but in... Um, the Bit, seventh, I he reckon. He would have been seventh, yeah. so he would have still picked up good points. And that was good hustle by the team to get him back uh, around. Uh, early on, though, of course, we lost Lewis Plato uh, in that uh, first lap incident. In terms of the Benelux Championship, the leader, Xavier Masson, didn't make it under the bridge at Dunlop. So that's you. Eddie Perfetti had a problem as well in the Benelux. He's riding high in the... Gideon Perfetti in the B class of the championship. Graham Mundy we lost as well from uh, Carrera Cup GB, so quite a bit of carnage there, but Union flags next to the Porsche Carrera Cup GB runners, and Charlie Eastwood got the fastest lap of 4.07.2. That is a smidge away from GT3 pace. Yeah, and over a second, 1.3 seconds quicker than the pole lap. He was a charged up, fired up man, wasn't he? But he was. as you say, that is incredibly close to uh, GT3 times. Yeah. Good stuff for from Charlie, and that was a good fight back, good hustle from the Red Line racing team. But it will be cheers and thank you very much for the Carrera Cup GB runners of Dan Kamish and Dino Zamparelli. They've got the bragging rights. They're be I know that this is a part of the championship, round seven of Carrera Cup GB, but there's nothing better than 
racing drivers in the same machinery, and that's the beauty of Carrera Cup worldwide, whether it's G called GT3 or Carrera Cup, that we can actually get these races together, Tim, and, and do sort of an FA Cup final or a Super Bowl sort of uh, presentation. Yeah, Porsche have a history of doing this. They've had a couple of races here at Le Mans. They had that World Cup meeting in 2011 on the Nordschleife. Which you were in, which I've and won seen. the British part. I've seen very, much. very, very difficult conditions. And it's fabulous that they do bring these Carrera Cup meetings together. They They've had races at the WEC races as yep. well as part of the ladder of opportunity that, of course, exists within Porsche. Nick Tandy, a former uh, Carrera Cup driver, now a full factory driver. It just shows the opportunities that exist. And, and thank you, Porsche, for putting on such a fantastic show. Yeah, Earl Bamber came through Carrera Cup Asia as well. Similar sort of career path. Uh, well, that's round seven of Porsche Carrera Cup GB and the lead is extended from Dan Kamish then uh, to Charlie Eastwood. But Zeno Zamparelli closes the gap on Charlie just a little bit. Tom Oliphant, the man uh, who uh, was in, what, third position. So he gets good points as well for from his fourth position. Lewis Plato, fifth in the championship. He's the big loser there with no points scored here. Ewan Mackay, though, getting decent points, came into this weekend in sixth. Rounds eight and nine. Snetterton, next time yes, around? Yeah, Snetterton next time round. The uh, Le so Mans of East Anglia. <laughs> Um, so no Dan Kamish there. Um, there'll be a replacement driver in that car yet to be announced by Nationwide, the sponsors, but we'll wait to see who that is. D is this no, the... don't look at me I'm like that, at you John. like that. Are you asking for the drive? Or... No, no, I was, I, was look, I was looking at you. Let's go back to the start of the race and see if we can define what went on here. There's Elinas in the 999 car, but I think it kicks off just ahead of him. So there's the leaders going through. It was a great start of the race. Oh, there, there was, was a, a touch, touch earlier. Yeah, yeah, we did. That's what fired the car across the track and back on just in the right side street. That was Eastwood flying up in the air. Um, Kamish taking avoiding action, which dropped him well back actually at yeah. the start. Um, yeah, he's down to what sixth off seventh there. Yeah, I think that was a puncture there for on the left front for Eastwood. Fortunately, he doesn't get stuck in the gravel. Yes. He gets the car round. Gets a new front left tire on by the red line racing boys. Under the yellows of the safety car, he rejoins double gives too much time and pulls out a magnificent result. What saved him was the yellows coming out halfway around to the circuit. He yeah. didn't lose any more positions from that. Rivera, I thought, was an absolute star there. Did a cracking job, made it interesting uh, for us. Alessio Rivera from the French Championship with the Tsunami RT car, the 21 car. Zamparelli looked like he had this. I mean, look at the gaps here at this point. You would have thought Zamparelli was going to drive away from this. Kamish has already recovered to third position. And after that, all right, a couple of interventions of slow zones, but we've had some... Kamish was mighty on the brakes all day. He was really, really good. Here's the pass. Watch this pass on Zamparelli. He lines it up, tees it up down the inside, clean pass up the inside. That was a great pass, and that was the, the first real signal of intent from Kamish. That must have given him a huge amount of confidence as well, Tim. Uh, the battle then was between Rivera and Kamish at the head of the field, and those two, well, they were both going to take top championship points for their own but there there's the little lock up he held on to it though he did and he then took held the lead right up yeah. until the last lap but was never able to break away no. he had to defend on the straights every single lap now here's this that. was charlie eastwood and that touch yeah. that was cheney on the 19 car that's in the extremely fast last right hander in the porsche curves now kamish this was the last lap he goes wide. too quick yeah he was on the wrong line as well, wasn't he? Because he's defending, that's fine. And he's Rivera around the outside. And at this point, you begin to think, oh, Dan, he's still got top points in the British Championship. There, right in behind him, is the Zamparelli car. But this, if you're going to win a race at Le Mans, do it like this. This is absolutely fantastic. Round the outside on the way into Indianapolis, using all of the road. But, of course, you can stop the car on the apex on the inside, use a bit of the camber, and have got a perfect exit. And he knows pretty... Now, Robin Fe Rivera goes to the outside, Zamparelli looks up the inside, and that's what cost him the exit speed. He didn't have the exit speed to challenge again. The old over and under from Zamparelli, which nets him second place overall, second place points in, in the Carrera Cup GP. Dan Kamish will stand on the top step of a podium at Le Mans. Carriga highlight, got to be. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, he was very emotional at Monaco because 
He's a young man with not a huge amount of experience and loves his motorsport. When he finished on second at Monaco, he was almost in tears. The magnitude of that occasion, having watched it on television, he was really emotional, and I'm sure he'll be the same here at Le Mans. For anybody who has even the slightest amount of petrol running through their veins to stand on the top of that podium, and ironically, he drove for Nick Tandy in Formula Ford in his dominant year in British Formula Ford when he won every race. Yeah. Our marshals doing a great job around the eight and a half miles this weekend, and we thank them here and at every motorsport event. We simply couldn't go racing without you all, men and uh, ladies alike, in the orange or the white if you're in the USA, flag marshals, recovery, etc. And uh, so, as, to, as, as the one of uh, us two competitors who still holds a competition license, you still have a competition license? Of course I do. Oh, you still do? <laughs> All right, OK. They only let me out in historic car. All right, OK. <laughs> Well, as both of us hold uh, competition licences, we'd like to say thank you to all the marshals. What a run. Now, what I don't know is whether we're going to get the overall. Yes, we are. This is the overall podium. This is fantastic. So, Alessio Rivera for Tsunami RT coming out. He's the best of the French. Third position overall. Then Dino Samparelli. Standing with both the flag of Italy and the UK on his... Suit and Dan Kamish then takes the top step of the podium, which means we will hear the British national anthem ring out over the Circuit de la Sarthe on race day morning of the 85th running of the 24 Hours of Le Mans and the seventh round of Porsche Carrera Cup GP as part of the Carrera Cup Le Mans festivities. best of the French Carrera Cup winners, hailing from Italy, but it is the two Carrera Cup GB boys, first and second. And that's a, you know, that is a feather in the cap of Carrera Cup GB, isn't it? When you come here to a circuit that is a big leveller in every sense of the word, that shows the quality and the class uh, with the GB boys right up there in the top six. Well, you know, of course, we have a good history with Damien Faulkner, Richard Westbrook, all going on to uh, great things in motorsport. But yes, it's a, it's a fiercely competitive championship. The UK um, uh, Carrera Cup championship has the most number of pro drivers in it ever since its inception. Now. And it's a, it's a real category. Love the trophy with the outline of the mono. That is going to take pride of place on the Camish mantelpiece, isn't it? Simon Leonard on the left there, team manager owner of a team owner of Redline Racing deservedly getting a trophy himself not just for Kamish's uh, uh, victory but also for the efforts in getting Eastwood's car back out. Yes absolutely correct that was heads up thinking from driver and the team there well Tim that extends the championship lead for Dan Kamish but plenty of racing to come in Carrera Cup GB following as it does the British Touring Car Championship. It does on the token rounds at, uh, in, in Great Britain and uh, a great spectacle it is too, but that is one of the finest Carrera Cup races I think I've ever seen. Half distance pretty much in the 2017 Carrera Cup season, Carrera Cup GB season. Dan Kamish extends his lead over Charlie Eastwood, but we've seen that you can never, ever take anything for granted because one F one fumble, one dropped score or a non-finish and it'll all be back on again. But as we head to the second half of the Carrera Cup GP season, it will be Dan Kamish who takes a handy points lead to Snetterton in East Anglia for the next two rounds. Thanks to Tim Harvey sitting alongside me. I'm John Hindorf. This has been a cracker. Try and join us again for more Porsche Carrera Cup GP around your local circuits in the UK. Thanks for joining us here at the Mall. Bye-bye.